So I think what the data has shown at our center is that in patients with a match-related donor, either an, a match unrelated donor, we can safely perform an ablative transplant with C34 selection. And the results of that approach basically show that we have similar control of disease, but less graft versus host disease, both acute and chronic. Now, when we moved into the multi-center setting, what we found in the Progress True trial that was published in JCO by Leo Lasnik, Marcelo Pasquini, and myself, it, when we compared C34 selection to post-transplant cyclophosphamide with a bone marrow graft and tacrolimus with a bone marrow graft, the primary endpoint of the trial, which was chronic GVHD relapse free survival, was identical across the three arms. So in many ways, we consider it a negative trial. However, we did see a decrease in overall survivals in the C34 selection. Arm. There was no difference in relapse, but there was higher TRM. And there was also, as we had shown previously, low OQ and chronic GVHD. So where does that leave the field of C34 selection? I think clearly there's a learning curve in terms of moving from a single center high volume transplant program to multi-center uh, trials, particularly with a new technology, not so much in terms of the actual selection process because that was done successfully, but the clinical management. And so I think if we want to see a future C34 selection, we have to think about how we can improve outcomes at other centers. Even today we are doing work at our own center to try and mitigate some of the complications. The main one is obviously is infection and delayed immune recovery. We've shown that with latemivir prophylaxis, we've in many ways eliminated CMV as a complication. And what we've also shown lately is with the better um, modulation of ATG dosing that we can also reduce complications. And historically, we've given weight-based dosing of ATG on day minus three and day minus four. We now have clear data showing that that is probably not the best way to do it. We've moved the ATG forward. We're actually giving it before the conditioning regimen. And the ATG now is based not just on the patient's weight, but also on the absolute lymphocyte count using a normal gram. And in early data from a new perspective trial using that approach, we're seeing enhanced immune recovery. So I do think there are ways to improve C34 selection, uh, both at our center and then try and export that uh, to other centers. And I think where the future also lies is really in thinking of C34 selection as a platform. This is an approach where you don't have uh, any post-transplant immune suppression and you have a very low rate of graft versus host disease. So it's really the ideal platform for, gene, uh, for graft engineering. And we're seeing now a number of different trials being done in this space, both in academia and in industry.